Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to the greatest show on Mon on Monday. Dude, you didn't even like say six Pacific or nine Eastern or anything like that? Or perhaps 11 p.m. for those people in Greenland that are watching, you know, across the way right now. Yes, I'm sure Greenland is uh, tuned in tightly to what's going on. What's going on, Internet? Welcome to the Tech Circus. We are live. We are on our own channel, finally, without parental supervision. I'm joined in the chat by my co-host, Mr. Michael Pepper from Michael Pepper Tech Talk. Howdy. Mr. Battery Powered, otherwise known as Chris. Greetings. Or the guy that tweets to, he will respond to absolutely every tweet on the internet. So <laughs> if you tweet something, you'll find Battery Powered somewhere in that thread. Hopefully we got a good show for you tonight. How was your week, gentlemen? Pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, a little, uh, you know, some stress and stuff going on, but um, skipping out of that, staying in our little bubble, pretty good. I I uh, I got my grass mode, which very highly technical thing there. Electric lawnmower, I had to figure it out, but I I made it happen. All right, all right. What do you got going, Pepper? I technically bought like my third computer in the last week because I returned the first two. So what'd you that get? Happened. So I ended up going with the Razer, um, the Razer Blade Fifteen, the twenty twenty edition there is a 2019 model um the way you can really tell the difference is the arrow keys are placed differently and the major difference is processor um improvement and slightly different keyboard so it's kind of uh kind of like apple doing the 16 inch macbook but razor did that with their with their line and i went with it's the i7 it's it's the six thread uh, the six core 12 thread because there actually is an i7 it's uh the 10 was it 10 850 is the processor for that one and that is about 200 dollars more um and has some limitations as far as you have to go with the the more expensive display and the large and um the RTX 2070 instead of the 2060 and some things like that. Um, so there's limitations and I didn't need to go with that crazy. So I went with the i7 six thread or six cool. core 12 thread, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage. Uh, none of that soldered on so I can upgrade that myself, which is kind of convenient. So your team PC, your PC master race again. That's all we need to know, right? I, I am. All right, that's good to go. <laughs> so as you guys can see behind me, Got my Vegas background going again. Vegas is open for business. Lost my first few hundred bucks yesterday gambling. God, it's good to be back and be broke again. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me so happy inside. Um, <laughs> so this is the tech circus. Just to give, I see a few of our usuals there in chat. We appreciate you guys showing up. So this is it for now on. So for our collab, the three of us idiots together, uh, we're running a show called Tech Circus. And so it's gonna have segments in the future, not tonight so much. Tonight's kind of like an introduction and uh, we'll go through the topics, uh, but we're hoping to have features for you guys and to make it a regular thing so you know about when to tune in and how to tune in as we go forward from that. So Chris, what are your thoughts on as far as what can we expect for you in this new channel format? Well, certainly not videos or any actual <laughs> recorded content ever because consistency in some things is very important. But I think uh, I will probably be the guy that brings you uh, the the commoner perspective. Um, you will be the guy that then yells at me about it and tells me that I'm wrong, most likely. And, um, and, and interrupt you when you're talking. Well, only if there's a technical delay. And drink but, beer. And drink beer. That's oh, yeah. Roles. Those are my yeah. skills in life. Yes. Michael Pepper, what are you going to bring us? What's your commitment to our viewing audience? Data analysis, facts, but in a way that isn't complicated, layman's terms, a way that people can understand that's different than just sitting here and reading out a label off a box or something like that. Um, 
photography aspects and kind of that perspective of things because not everybody knows about photography not everybody knows about the the sensors the lenses the things like that but it can relate not just in the smartphones because i'm sure we'll we'll get into other things and um computers and good to go so so i mean i'm here mostly for conspiracy theories and the troll but uh, what we're like trying it. to do, what we're trying to do here is right now live streaming is oversaturated as hell, and so what we're trying to do is come with a different angle. We're not going to sit up here and you know descend into arguments and or off topics. We're going to try to bring you guys very structured shows, and hopefully your input and your questions will guide that because you're we're all watching the shows. We all the three of us watch 50 live streams a week. So the goal here is not to try to do something that's already being done better. It's just to do it different and to maybe pick up the scraps of what's not getting addressed in the 500 people in chat and some of the bigger streams. So that's how we're going to start out here. So tonight's first topic if you've uh missed Twitter this week, CES is talking about coming back in January. It's about 6 months from now in person. And so on it seems like the majority, I don't know, I only follow a few hundred people, seems like the majority are of the opinion that CES is too soon, six months from now. Uh, for me, I think in six months' time, either we're going to be at a point where there's vaccines and, or we're going to be at a herd immunity. So one way or the other, it's going to work itself out in six months from now, right? We're going to get a second wave, everyone's going to die, or we're going to be cool. That's kind of my no-nonsense approach. Michael Pepper, what do you think about in-person CES? Are you going to show up? Are you going to hang out with me? I'll be there. That's my that's my my goal is to 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 be there and you know, so some things can be done virtually. Like when they do these announcements, do people really need to necessarily be there? Yes, for hands-on stuff, but for the people that they really are going to have thorough hands-on stuff, the companies are going to end up sending it out to them anyways. Like you're not going to do all your hands-on footage there necessarily. You can do some, but you're not going to even have enough time with it. You're not going to have the public release model. You're not going to have, you're going to basically have like beta software a lot of times on things. And so in person is important. And just like everywhere else has learned, They'll figure out a way to separate people to keep people so you're not standing nose to nose. Um, even if it's like, uh, oh, you want to use this product, you got to sign up on a sheet and we'll tell you, okay, come back at 3 p.m. or whatever. That's your slot. Come back, you know, talk to us then. So not everybody's dealing with each other and around each other. Or by then, like you said, it will just be dealt with and pretty much everybody will have had it and gotten rid of it or there'll be some man-made way of dealing with it. So Now, piggybacking off of that, I would just say for most of the hands-on things that you're talking about, all the big YouTubers, all the big media people, they already pull them. I know you haven't been, but they pull them in the private hotel suites. They pull them in the private conference oh, room yeah, yep. that aren't even available to the general yep. public. I think the showroom stuff will have probably – I'll probably have extra gloves, possibly mask if we're still talking about it by then. Uh, but I think for the most part, it'll be private, like four to six person suite shows. Chris? I think uh, I'm in all day. I mean, I, I fully agree that in a in a city like that, I mean, they're, they're already reopened. I mean, I know you're also there, so you're seeing it firsthand. I think that they're going to be pretty well versed on whatever precautions they need to take. I also think there will be some herd immunity developing between now and then. I mean, there's talks of a big fall rush and some other things. I mean, right now we're talking about numbers creeping back up. But to keep the focus on CES, I think that it will be a positive experience. I think it will be a different experience. I think that's the other part of it, uh, is this will be a weird year. There will be some virtual stuff, which will make it very different. But I think that that would be a, uh, a great time to get out there. So, yeah, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll see you there. January 6th, right? Sleeping on the couch. Yes. Well, you told <laughs> Actually, me I could sleep at the bus station. I'm just saying, so if any other creators are watching this, I have a crazy idea. Let's rent a mansion, like a six-bedroom mansion with a swimming pool, with a waterfall, and we could set up some insane video shoots, some insane B-roll, plus throw our own mixers outside of the corporate 
world that becomes CES. So the so, only way I the only way I see CES really going to crap is if the sponsors and the manufacturers themselves puss out. Yeah. I mean, if obviously if Sony, Samsung, and all these big names if they say no, we're not doing that, then it's gonna suck. But I don't. I don't see that happening, man. Six months is a long time in what we're dealing with right now. And, and it's this too. It's not, it's, that's the whole thing. I mean, CES is really, it's about looking that year ahead too. They need, they need, I yeah. mean, it, it is one of those things. I don't want to call it, you know, Christmas or whatever rig- religious affiliation that you have during that time of the year. Uh, <laughs> mine is CES, you know, it's my electronic Hanukkah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, you need you need to have that thing to push everybody, you know, I mean, it, there's so much industry stuff that comes out of it. I mean, number one, there's a lot of like disappointment and rage, which is fun to watch. It makes great drama and great marketing, but there are some really, really neat products that came out of there. And, and every year, those innovations, seeing them hands on, getting people exposed to them, the companies need that. And I mean, you talk about stimulus and stimulus dollars and all that stuff. We need that as people that are interested in this to go feed on it. It's not going to be the same if it's all just virtual and it's they, see, they have to do it we need to drive that irrational spending yes yeah. <laughs> especially because <laughs> this will probably be one of the worst fourth quarters the stock market and all this stuff is getting it's insane it's such a false market right now between the stimulus and the the rates being dropped it, somebody's gonna have to pay the piper and unfortunately it's gonna come to pay when the stimulus and the unemployment and all that ends so yeah. about september october we're looking for a pretty bad economy and you know, then rolling into January, they're going to have to get people motivated to part with their money again. So Pepper, what do you think could go wrong? What's our worst case here? In person show. What's the worst case? What's the worst that can happen? CES comes. Are we worried about mass infection from CES? Is that going to be the hotspot epicenter? I mean, What's the worst that happened? If a company decides, if everybody says we're going to CES and then everybody goes and people get sick or I don't know what, what, what's the worst fallout? What's the risk here? The risk is that I don't know. What's the, do you know what, like the average number of people that attend like a rough number of the number of people that attend is at all? Thousands. I know that like 10,000. Uh, the last number I saw was like 30,000, but I okay, don't, so don't 30, quote me on that. Okay, <laughs> so 30,000. So you're look, talking about... This year's will be out. So you're talking about out of that, maybe 1,000 people, if it was its worst circumstances, would get deathly ill from it. They're saying... And potentially die. So to interrupt you, as a, that's my job, 175,000 total attend 30 to 40,000 per day on average. Okay. Gary's using the metric system. He says 180,000. So, so 180,000, 175,000. Total people that go through those halls. Total people. So you're talking about uh, just maybe 5,000 of them that would die if it's equally as 5, deadly to die. Today, that's, like, that's only 3%. Yeah, but you got to realize most people attending are not over fifty. So the the death rate of COVID that's is like what I was gonna say half that's of a if, percent. Like <laughs> that's if it's like at its deadliest rate, and you have enough people that are there that are susceptible to it. So, um, and the thing is, you're willfully attending, Ooh. and if you're sick and you're not feeling well. They're probably not going to let you in if you're coughing and sneezing and hacking and stuff, just like they, any other year. I think it'll be pretty much standard that these temperature checks will stay forever. It's fl- going to be bio invasive screening for the rest of our lives. That's flu season. Yeah. So it's not any different than flu season. You go there and they don't want people getting the flu either. They don't want people like hacking on all their stuff. I, I will say I've been dealing with the temperature checks at our, some of our local stores. And I think it's really uncomfortable. It's really unpleasant. And it's, and it's really, it's just weird. It's going to take some getting used to. I was, I, I mean, I don't even, I understand some places do it like on the forehead and stuff, but man, the places around here have been. Vegas has taken the bigger casinos. They don't want to put that hands on. And to be frank, it's, if somebody is sick, 
it doesn't make much sense for me to be two feet away from you <laughs> taking your temperature. So a lot of the bigger casinos are going to be investing in remote thermal scanning where someone gets tagged. And as you're walking through the corridor, someone goes, hey, sir, would you like to come to our lounge for people that are deathly ill or I don't know? On the 24th probably, floor. Probably give you players card points or something. I don't know what the deal is, but <laughs> I, I'm not really worried about it. And the first everybody said Vegas is going to take three years to come back. The strip was packed. Three weeks. The, yeah, everything was packed. And people are just like, you know what? YOLO. <laughs> like they're over it. It's, yeah. It, I've seen it. I, I can't, you can't go anywhere without it packed right now in Vegas. Technically, Lurking also says it's not just the attendees, it's the folks they then infect once they leave, too, which is absolutely right. You, it is very appropriate to think about the, the women of the night. And that's very considerate of you. <laughs> as long as they are not too anal about their testing. We're yeah. fine. Do you say uh, anal and testing in the same sentence? I did. Okay. We'll move on from that. <laughs> Apparently that's not normal, by the way. I don't understand. I don't think I've ever heard anal testing in the same sentence. They say it's the most accurate form. <laughs> I keep wondering why they're using the same thermometer. It's, it's all about mercury. The forehead stuff doesn't work at all. <laughs> Anyways, we digress. Sorry. <laughs> the next thing going on now is I'm trying to upgrade all my equipment. I got this thing boom thing going on and uh trying to step up my game so part of stepping up your game means not using a cell phone to film anymore i've been on the hunt for a camera and every time i jump in my chat with michael pepper and chris here and i ask michael pepper a simple question hey dude should i buy this he's like well <laughs> what we have to do is evaluate the light sensitivity and the iso <laughs> settings what kind of attachments will you be connecting to it <laughs> Oh, and don't forget about when you pull it in its raw form. And I'm like, dude, do I buy it or not? So, hey, I don't go that far. <laughs> I'm much simpler than that. Mm, I usually go that guy, far. So usually it goes that far go. because <laughs> what happens is then you're like, well, I want to do this and this and that and that. So it's you have to dissect it because I don't want to point you in the wrong direction. Just like with my videos. What is you know, it shouldn't be Poly too difficult. Dexahedron value recommended. In the it's not that difficult. Micrometer. I just want the best camera that does absolutely everything perfect. That's small. That doesn't cost a lot. That's it. <laughs> Duh. A <laughs> so, pixel. <laughs> so I was super stoked on the Sony ZV-1. Totally was going to get it. Uh, if you guys followed us before last week, I mentioned the U it's got a micro USB connection though, not a USB-C. So that is cringe worthy, but I, if it was everything else perfect with the, the the super fast focus and all the other cool stuff that comes with it, I was willing to get it. However, lately in the last few days, I have seen reviews where if you are even in a hint of low light, that autofocus and all of the greatness that is that vlogging ZV-1 is lost. So now I'm back on the hunt for something that can be my web streaming webcam that I can interface my microphone into, that I can pull SD and put it right into my computer, that I can change lenses if I want to, and as cheap as possible. <laughs> Chris, I'm gonna let you take that first if you got well, any I just, input. I, I just I just feel I feel so misre misrepresented because Pepper tears apart like the microns and the and the what exactly the galvanic corrosion rate of the inside of the shell is and all this stuff and oh, doesn't galvanic, give you yes. galvanic yeah. corrosion i'll drink and i <laughs> and and i get i gave you the simple answer very simple there's no USB C. it's dead it's dead and that's that is the answer on that one by the way it's dead and i will tell you if you want a webcam uh also shout out to viper man what's up good to see you what good up? to see you um it's uh it, I have a USB-C webcam that works pretty well. I mean, it works well enough that like you can see what I look like, but not so much that you have to look at the same view my wife does. But it's still pretty quality. And as you know from last week, uh, in an inattentive state, it is a great little you know microphone. So I'm liking the separate webcam thing. I, I do like having the, the, the webcam here and then production no, cam over here. I don't have a problem with the webcam I have, but I look at guys like, like Zach Talks Tech. That's a good example. That's one I can think of off the top of my head. His setup is dope. Like he looks good and sounds good no matter what. 
like always on point. And I know sometimes depending on how I have my green screen or if I have lighting different, sometimes the Logi webcam doesn't get it done the way I want it to. Michael. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. You had a thought. No, I was just going to say, I mean, I, I agree, but the, the, the stream cam. So th this is like the, whatever it's like 175 bucks or something like that. If you can even find one, I, I think, I think hand sanitizer and uh, webcams and speaker phones and butt wipes are all coming back into stock everywhere. But the, the stream, <laughs> the stream cam is a USB C connection and it is like new and people didn't know what, what is what it makes it worth the additional seventy five dollars of like a C nine twenty or whatever, and I will tell you that it it's really really good in whatever color light or uh, whatever color brightness whatever I'm doing, and like you can kind of leave it, lock it, and it'll just do its thing, almost like a real camera. Unlike the cheaper webcams that constantly are adjusting to all sorts of weird nuances in the room, it's been semi pro as far as webcams go. I mean, this isn't something that I if I was doing like creator tutorials or telling you how to win YouTube every day. And making like a, a whole class, I probably wouldn't use it for that. But just my, I kind of wanted to just throw that in there. Oh, I appreciate that. Michael, where do I go from here? So with everything you said, um, actually, Gary mentioned the SL2, um, which is a very, very good camera. You can connect it right up, USB cable, no fancy adding in. Um, oh, shoot. No adding in like capture cards or anything like that and go direct to webcam. But honestly, one of the things I've noticed lately is that the Canon M50 and the Canon M100s have been on really good sales. Um, <laughs> Father's Day is coming up. Not for some people. <laughs> for people watching the replay, they'll see in chat why we're laughing. <laughs> this is not, definitely not a kid show. Just, so. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna just, ba just bad. <laughs> I think you can delete that stuff. I can delete it. Hang on. I think I can. I can. No, I no. I can only block you. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> just block. Don't let me have any chat I access. Should, whatsoever. I should block. I gotta block that guy. I should not have chat. Also, access. what what what's up, Tech Love Mama? How you doing? So. <laughs> I would go with either the M50 or the M100 and a, well, it depends on what you want to do, but like one of my favorite lenses is a 50 millimeter um, or their equivalent, which would be a 28 because they have a crop factor of, I think it's 1.6. So theirs would be around a, tw a 28 millimeter. Um, because that is about the perspective that the human eye sees. So if you're using that for photography and you're using it for a webcam, the angle is not so wide that you get distorted and it's not so narrow and you get a good um, bokeh, good blur behind you. And you can get... Um, like I have for my Nikon, I have a 35 millimeter f1.8 and I paid... At the time, I paid three hundred dollars for it. Now you can find them anywhere from like one fifty to two hundred for a good, um, large aperture, a lot of light lens, and that will pretty much suit you for most needs. That's what I got through all my last year of photography classes doing, which included portraiture and in studio work. So let me ask you about the 50, the Canon 50. My my buddy has that. And he says it's dope, except for the fact that in 4K, it like crops like insane and it drives them nuts. And is that because of the lens he's using or is that something inherent to the fact that it's shooting in 4K and the limitation of the hardware? It's That's the, something I would rather avoid. <clears throat> it's the way that, that they're handling shooting 4K with the sensor so it's hardware and then they crop in to give you that resolution that detail also um in order to shoot in a higher frame rate essentially they crop in so that allows you to increase frame rates because most of these cameras if you look at what they're able to shoot photos at they're able to capture maybe 10 or 12 photos per second 
at, you know, when you're snapping away. Let me make it clear. Let me make it clear. I'm not buying a camera to take pictures. So when you're doing video, it has to crop in in order to be able to increase that frame rate. Um, I was actually just watching a video about that right before we started having to do with drones, funny enough. But um, same kind of idea. It's the sensor size and it's the Bayer array that they use for that sensor and they crop in on it. So. What about that SL3 people are talking about? So do the 4K crop? Also, does it shoot at 60 frames? I, don't think, I, I think the assault, I haven't looked it up. I'm pretty I'm sure just going off of chat. 30. Chat's throwing it out there. Most yeah. of these, I'm most of the time they go to 30. Um, Ooh, it's a 24, actually. It, it looks Ooh, like that's even better, technically, so in a way, because no. if you shoot at 30 frames, then if you want to. Big crop. Yeah. Not a fan of crop. I'd rather have as big of an image as possible, and then I can work it in post to crop what I want. Because a lot of times I'm working in, like people can't see right now, but this is a tiny, basically an extra bedroom, and there's kids' toys and all kinds of crap, like two inches outside of frame when I'm making my videos. And I like to be able to say, okay, for this, I have this background, and I want to cut that. Like you see a lot of mine are super zoomed in, sometimes too much, because I had to to get it done. But then also I plan on doing videos out on the strip for B roll and stuff like that. And I want to be able to get the whole scene in, you know what I mean? So I'd rather, if it's going to crop, I want it to be in post when I want it to do that rather than this is your window into the world. If you get what I'm saying. Well, and the other thing is when you crop like that, then if you grab a still, let's say you grab a still from the video to use as your thumbnail or something, then that's even lower resolution cropped in even more so. And you're going to have even more issues with that too. Typically I'll shoot in 4k and, and then render in 1080. So it's not, not really lost. And the other thing that causes issues with is, uh, light sensitivity. You have higher chances of grain in low light, Also, there's things I don't want to go too far, but you have issues with like chromatic aberration. So, for example, if you are shooting outside, chromatic aberration, (laughs) chromatic, chromatic aberration. I was super worried about that. I'm glad you brought Um, it up. Go ahead. No, but if you are photographing and you move or like you're outside taking videos and there's trees and they move, you can get fringing on the edge because it's moving faster than the frame rate. So essentially what will happen is it will capture here and here and here. And when it tries to align those, you get discoloration through the red, green and blue channels. And it looks awful. And there's not, Unless you are going to do some extensive editing. And even then, some of that stuff you can't really fix because you're talking about limited frame rates to begin with. If you're shooting at 60 frames per second and have that, you could drop out some frames and fix it. But when you're already down to 30 or 24, you don't have any extra frames to deal with. You can't really go in and remove the ones that are off colored and still have. So, I got you. So what about as far as outputs? Is the way to go SD card? Or is there any kind of links that I should be aware of? Because all I've ever done is pull the SD card out and plug it into the computer. Is there a more efficient way outside of AirDrop, Chris, before you go into Apple Loving? (laughs) Yeah, outside of that, for us us normal people? Outside of that, is there any links, cables, or nothing? Um, Yeah, there are some. So uh, Canon... um, I, I don't, and I also, I know that, um, man, I was going to make a bad joke. I'm not going to do that now anymore. I'm just going to go right to the, to the, why stop one. now? So, so no, I, 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 I'm trying to be a little bit more consistent. I mean, Canon has new beta software and I didn't want people to get concerned or confused by, you know, referring to, to one place being better at beta than another. So, uh, Canon has some new beta software that lets you use their cameras as webcams. I know, uh, Gary contractors, BOV has one of these. Yeah, I, he has the SL2, which I believe is working with this. I have some stuff that works with it, and I'm in the process of playing around with it. But it permits you to direct connect their camera right into your computer and use it as a webcam, which is awesome. Uh, 
and and that is I mean so other there are other cameras that you can do this with and obviously those come with you know you can do this little thing right here let's see if I can do this without really evil things cam link cam links are great this is runs off of a HDMI input into your computer um, this is the other way to do it but there are Canons that will now do it directly and there are I believe Sony's will do it as well but it's it's you've got to get up in the up in the price range without the cam link thing so Canon uh, there some a lot of their their higher end cameras are now and some of their middle stuff like G7x SL2 SL3 uh, you can now use directly as a webcam and then some of the the higher end Sony stuff you can do as well and obviously the higher end Canon stuff but um, but in between all that you've got to you've got to use the HDMI out of your camera and a cam link. Got it. And I just realized Chris totally didn't answer the question that Mike asked at all. No. Well, I did. Actually, I said <laughs> Canon. Well, he did. He answered it in a proprietary way. <laughs> I was confused because you you were asking about SD cards, though. So well, no, he... I was asking about no, I was asking if there's another method to go okay. about getting the data without yeah. the SD card that would be efficient without using. There is actually you it, do there there is one other thing uh, that you could do. It's uh, AirDrop. I don't know, but really there is. You mother. No, but really speaking of SD cards are actually. I mean, I I do use that when I'm shooting videos at home. I will drop every. I'll I'll jam everything in the SD card and just move it back and forth because that whole live webcam <laughs> real time thing uh, is is great. But it's just. I mean. It sounds weird, but to me, it's inefficient to make videos that way, to like dump everything in your computer. It's like, I kind of like having the buffer zone of the SD card because it's like, at least I'm forced to now manage it versus just having this gigantic thing growing on my computer and be tethered to my computer. It's not like everybody in the world has MacBooks or iPads or, you know, great creators devices. Some people have to deal with like Windows and uh, I'm considering those people in this statement. And here's the concern though of going direct to your computer. If that connection crashes at some point, you have potentially just lost everything unless it's also backing up on the camera at the same time. So some people you can record like you can record right into OBS. You could literally sit down, use your camera as a webcam, hit record, record right into the software. When it's done, it's saved on your computer. That is somewhat safe until the software crashes and that whole file is corrupted and you just lost everything. So what was always recommended in photography classes and even talking to some of my classmates that were also taking videography is always have on-device backup. The fewest points of connection, you're less likely to have issues. So you're talking about connecting out of your camera, there's one connection, into your computer, there's another connection, that card that it's connecting to in your computer is connected at another hardware point. So you have all these points of potential failure. So always make sure that you back up on the device as well. And some cameras, I'm, I haven't looked at much at Canon, have dual slots. I had some classmates that actually would shoot and they had a SD card slot and a compact flash slot on some of these cameras. So you had both kinds and it's backup. And then um, never transfer files plugging the camera into a computer. Always use a card reader either connected to the USB port or if your computer has a card reader built in, use that. Because like I said, again, there's points of failure and you'd hate to corrupt the card and lose you're transferring one file and lose the rest of them so oh yeah i, I can see myself smashing the camera into pieces so does it screws up <laughs> yeah i do and i do have that on my um i have a canon 70 mark ii and that does have the the cf and the sd and it is uh, it's awesome because i have the gigantic sd card that's just in there and it's kind of always the dupe and then i have the cf which is a little faster uh which it is kind of like my active read write drive so I'll go out and shoot for a day and dump the the compact flash off and then kind of everything will still be sitting in your SD card in the background. So uh, that is, that's the other, I, and I, it's kind of weird. I wasn't even thinking about that, Michael, but that's the absolute best part. If you, if you have that link between your computer and your camera severed, you're dead, you're DOA. Also tech for your needs mentioned Wi-Fi transfer. 
Um, that's true. Some of them have it built in, yeah. and then there's also I know Canon. Ha- I know Nikon has this. I'm sure Canon has it as well. Um, the adapters that sit on your hot shoe, and then they plug into the port of the camera and essentially add wireless transfer potential uh, capability to it, as well as being able to control things from your phone. So you could sit there with your phone or your tablet, launch an app, control your settings, change things, monitor what you're doing wirelessly, and even to your computer wirelessly and have if you're a, if you're shooting photos that they'll transfer right to your computer raw jpeg whatever format they're in they're there um, and just i know i mean my canon uh, not my 7d but my g i have a g7x mark ii um and now they're up to the mark three on that but the g7x actually has an app that you can and i, I think this is common across like uh, I, I assume it's kind of become the commonplace since i bought the this camera a couple years ago, but there's an iOS app. I assume there's an Android one as well that you can pair to the the device actually emits Wi-Fi, its own little wi- like direct device Wi-Fi, and you can connect your device to it and then remote control your phone. So I've done time lapses and all sorts of stuff as long as you have the battery, which is the other right. concern to go back to. I know we were talking a little bit, hopping around a bit. If you're going to use it for webcam or something else, I would highly recommend that you either plan on keeping your session short which means not inviting us uh, or getting a dummy battery that you can plug into a charger or something like that. So, um, but yeah, the, the neat part about that remote control part for the camera is you can, in, in the G7X, you can do almost anything that you would do at the camera from a phone and it's on, it's, I don't know, it's own, I can't remember what it's called, like Wi-Fi direct or something like that, but it can also join other Wi-Fi networks. So for such situations as you're at like a major hotel, depending on how their Wi-Fi security is and all that stuff, you can join the camera to their Wi-Fi and then like leave your camera running somewhere outside waiting for a storm to pass and be eating breakfast downstairs and then finally launch your phone and go, sweet, I want to take some uh, time-lapse photos now because I didn't want to record all the BS going by, but now I do. So anyways, a little bit, little maybe maybe a little little bit like off no, the topic, I, I, but I'm going to check out that uh, right now, just hearing, looking at chat and I appreciate you guys. Gary's even looking stuff up for me. Um, I'm going to take a strong look at that SL3 now because I'm not a photog. I'm not no interest in it. I just want to make better content. And if it makes, if that works for me, 650 sounds perfect, (laughs) you know, and you can always add lenses if necessary. So Chris, (laughs) um, real quick, how old or how new is your, is your newest Canon camera then? Um, I think, I think 2017 or 2018. Okay. Right? So have they improved the user interface? Is it more friendly? Cause I remember like 2012, 2013, it was absolute crap. Like I hated their user interface. It was confusing to explain to people. <laughs> like everything was like multi-layered, you know, like you had to go inside a menu to a menu to a menu to get to a lot of things. I feel like it's, so it's kind of funny you say that because I've, I went over in around that time, ironically, I switched over to Nikon because I had a a long time respected photographer friend of mine who always shot Nikon. And I was like, maybe I'm doing this all wrong. I've, I'd spent a small import vehicles worth of uh, money on lenses at the time because I was destined for great things. And I, and I was like, maybe, you know, like all tech people, right? I made this choice in this investment. Maybe I need something totally different. So off I went to Nikon and Nikon, the menus on Nikon were like, they just irritated the crap out of me. And I tried a hmm. Sony in between there too. And Sony, I don't know what, I, I don't like, so for, so for for me, it was like, can, I mean, and granted, I came from Canon. And the thing that's nice is the can, it's kind of consistent around Canon. Their point and shoot cameras are kind of weird. Their DSLRs are really, really great for me for their menuing system. The Nikon one was like good, but kind of stupid in some, the way that some of it worked. And then Sony, um, I don't know, like, I don't know who Sony was designed for. They're, they're, their OS or their UI on the things was awful. It's been a minute since I tried Sony's, but for me, I've always, I kind of like the Canon cause it's kind of like no matter which model you're using, everything's usually in the same place. And you can just go build your own menu if you want to. You can literally take a bunch of things and stick them on one menu page and then just launch that menu page from anywhere you're at on the UI. Yeah, so they have drastically improved cause it was absolute crap when I was taking my photo stuff. I'd have class, mates come to me and go hey can you show me how to do this i would literally have to like R- rtfm i tell them that constantly yeah. read the- that's how i read them with- and it was like i couldn't figure out how to get to a menu that's one press of a button or like a function button and a scroll of a wheel on my fu- on my camera was like 
sub menu inside another menu and then it was like a parallel menu like, and it was it sounds exactly like chris asked me how to use this note yeah yeah it's like the same conversation what do you mean it's easy i'm on my 15th menu <laughs> it, really, it really is how it is it's like i just want to turn off the like bro it's right uh, there like the navigation button just i don't i just want them gone just swipe over on the edge scroll down third right. icon six sub menu double tap developer option <laughs> click on <laughs> click on font and then once you get the font 17 <laughs> stupid or something font, like yeah <laughs> why do i want this crap? enable usb debugging plug it into your computer launch a terminal <laughs> and you'd never you'd never realize there's an there's an os entirely built around on screen display it's just like constant everywhere you go it's just like do you, you know blah 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 always on display blah blah it's like is this in every menu or do i just keep putting up here somehow by accident so yeah. It sounds like the other day when we were driving, when my wife and I were driving, and she kept going back to the same turnaround. Like literally, we drove around Lansing like twenty times back to the same turnaround. Speaking I was like, of- I told her, "Honey, if you turn left three times, it's like going right. Stop doing that." <laughs> yeah. Speaking of uh, Note Ten, did you get that sunset wallpaper I sent you, Chris? I did. I did, and I can't. I'm. I'm just trying to get my phone back up. I can't figure it out. <laughs> Speaking What's of it? Note Tens and Samsung, um, how about their event coming up? Yes, Ice Universe, according to him and a couple others. Uh, I'm hoping that's true because I can't wait to get away from this iPhone. <laughs> it's driving me insane, and I'm not paying full retail for a Pixel 4. And for those of you that don't know that are like, Dude, there's tons of good deals. I don't buy used phones ever. Yeah. No. Me, all new, always. I yeah. know they're fine and they come with Apple Care. They're flawless. Nope. I'm that don't guy. Care. I'm that guy. I will give you my used stuff, but I will never buy used. I don't care how perfect it is. I, I am a just high my, quality my thing. creator of used goods. <laughs> that's my thing. That's, that's my goal. Like, I will make you used stuff and I will sell it to you at a reasonable price so you can then go do whatever the hell you want to do with it. But I'm not going to buy your used crap. Cause I just no. don't, I don't know what you've done with, I can't, I, I, I'm more intimate with my technology than my wife. So I feel like I need a close relationship with my technology. That's just the way I am. It's, it's one time use and then pass it to the homie. Now you get it. Like that's it. But uh, yes, August 5th, it's looking good. It looks like we're getting the, the galaxy watch Two, the Z flip with 5g. We're getting the S 20 uh, or the note 20 and the fold two. So I'm looking at the Fold 2 and the Galaxy Watch 2. That's what I'm pumped on from that. There might be some other stuff in there, too. Um, Tab. Tab The Tab S7, um, which it'll be interesting to see. I'm hoping that they will go with a tablet-specific processor and stuff this time and not just throw in a Snapdragon from a phone. And actually use something that's designed for um, tablets and designed for the processing and things like that. Because there are a lot of people that now, the reason they buy iPads is for the processing time. Content creators, um, everyday people wanting to be able to just edit their home videos and stuff and not have it take 20 years. I mean, that's important to every to more than just us. And I feel like if they were to throw in, like, I don't know what it would be a Snapdragon 865 X or whatever they would call it. Um, that I think would stand out more, especially for the pricing that they throw into these things, because yeah, it's cheaper than iPads in a way, but then you throw in, the added keyboard costs and it's pretty much the same. Um, You know, they include a pen and things like that, but then it's weird because depending on the carrier you have, if you get a carrier model, there's all sorts of funky things as far as like storage capacity and Ram. So I'm hoping what they'll do this year is say, Hey, um, every carrier is going to have the same variants, uh, you know, 256 gigs of storage I don't know, 12 gigs of RAM or whatever, and that we're going to actually design this thing and use a processor specific for it. We're not just giving you a large phone. Um, so. 
Well, the big deal about it is, so I kind of tweeted a little low key on this is there's seasons, right? So we're at the end of trashing Android season because come July, everybody, you know, cause we go through it. It's usually July ish August when Sammy drops their, the flagship or the note, they're like, this is so refreshing. I've never used an Android like this before. It's so amazing. I'm switching. Good luck. Have fun with those videos. And then uh, everybody jumps on the Samsung train and they ride that, and then they say pixels to fail in October, and then October, November, they ride back to the iPhone. Why I can't stand Android. I'm switching back to iPhone. <laughs> I don't have iMessage and AirDrop. What a piece of crap. <laughs> and I wondered why all my iPhone videos are, <laughs> I'm not going to stick with the Max. I'm going back to the regular side. I don't like the regular so one. I'm going back to the end. <laughs> why didn't, I mean, at least Shit, I was never going over to Android, which Shit, is probably, it's I mean, it's probably a good time to talk about like what we're not too. I mean, that's the other thing. Welcome to our channel. Now that the intro is over, um, you're always going to get exactly <laughs> what we think, and and you're always going to get a very transparent engagement from us. So if you ever watch us here and you see us doing this kind of stuff, where one of us is like switching or we're going, like all three of us here, we all sort of the reason why we get along is because we always want. I'll just call it the best, but it's not, not like in that, like, yo, there's a flex, but this is like, uh, we want the best thing for our needs and we want the best thing. And I, I always do this and I end up saying some more tech for your needs. So tech for your needs. What's up, man? Um, but, uh, but uh, <laughs> we always end up right now. We, totally we all, st- oh gosh. It's like, when it's like when Zach kept saying tech for your needs is like battery, like, powered. <laughs> battery powered. Yeah. I know battery powered, battery powered. That was, that was pretty interesting. I was like, are they summonsing me? My brain is hurting but it was i mean that's the thing we're, we're always looking for like we're always trying to solve these stupid technical problems so there never is going to be a best one or a reason to switch because we're kind of always switching we're kind of we're always doing something like that we're always we're always mucking with it which is why to us as some smaller creators especially i mean this whopping sub count on our new channel of, i think we might hit 10 maybe after tonight but they're uh, very dedicated very dedicated they, well that's the thing we have the best we have the best and that's the whole thing like i'd rather rock with 10 people that ride with us through through the real world exactly. than 100 that don't even care to watch our stuff exactly that's real exactly stuff. and it's been really cool i um so like today i had like three new people subscribe and comment and it was people that have commented before but they finally subscribe now and it's cool to see like okay what they're doing is waiting to see like what we're doing and they're not subscribing right away because they want to see like, do we provide what they want? And so it's awesome to see that and to see that people stick with us and then they go, Hey, uh, we're going to recommend this to other people or whatever. So I just told people that we were getting rid of pepper. And so and it, upped, it upped our sub count immediately. I was like, it's wild through the roof. The shows will now be 14 minutes. And uh, <laughs> the only other the only other relevant thing for anybody still paying attention and staying on task is uh, Max Weinberg, I think, uh, reported that the code has been reported for Verizon for the Fold 2. So we don't know yet if they're actually going to sell it like payment plan style, which I think they will because they realize how popular the Fold 1 was. Uh, but at very least, it's going to support the millimeter wave of 5G that Verizon has, which means for if you haven't watched or caught up on 5G, there's different bands. Not every uh, carrier has every band, and uh, millimeter is a good one. So Verizon has that, and at least the Fold 2 should support that based on what I saw today. And the the um, S20, the the updated model for Verizon, should be coming out probably around that I don't think anybody, time. Ca- anybody cares about the S20 um, anymore. Anyway. But <laughs> people have been waiting because people have uh, gone, oh, well, I'm not going to buy this. I'm not buying the Unlocked. I'm on Verizon and it won't support, you know, the S20 won't and I don't want the Plus and I don't want the Ultra or whatever. And there's been people that have been waiting. Um, so it'll be good to see that. But it's just going to be weird because like they're going to drop an S20 and then drop the Note 20 at the same time. I'm um, switching. I'm, I'm it's switching. gonna be like one week I'm switching to the S20, the next week, uh never mind, forget about that. I'm switching to, to the note. To the note. No, I need to fold two. <laughs> and then October, November. It's usually November. Time right in time for the holidays, it's time to trash Android again. Talk about how amazing iOS is. It's just it's hilarious. easy for me though. I've never quite 
I mean, I've I've got the Android, but I, I'm I, I like I I do appreciate having like a a Linux subsystem again. Like I've kind of just I I kind of I had to say like I've got to. You need both. You, you, you need always both. you always need both do. to do something. You really I, you really I, right do. now all I have is this. I don't have yeah. a single Android device, and I'm literally like like an addict scratching myself because it you realize everything you miss. And then as soon as I only have an Android device, I completely miss airdrop and iMessage. And it's not, I wouldn't call it optimized or refined. It, I have as many problems on my iPhones as I have, if not more than my Android phones. You also use a mouse. Okay. I'm American. <laughs> <laughs> I drink, I drink beer. I drink whiskey. I, I shoot <laughs> guns and I use a mouse. I use a mouse. And but I pee in the bushes. And I pee in the bushes when I'm mouse. outside. <laughs> Damn you social justice warriors. I will continue, continue to use a mouse. Uh, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I'm just, I know Jason's not Jason. Actually, in, where is Jason? No one tagged Jason or reminded him. Jason he, C or fired. You yeah, know what's he, funny? I'm the creator of the week. I know, and he doesn't even care to show up to your stream, me, bro. What is going on? This is cold. I'm just saying you should show up. Cold. I'm just yeah. saying you should show up. Bro. Really good. Trying to win some popcorn, dude. What the hell? God. What's, What's up with you, damn guys? God. Anyways, circling back. Uh, wallpaper bugs. I, I I gotta drop this up. Um, someone else has to let me. Uh, someone else has to pop me up there, though. Oh, oh, oh. there we go. I don't Sorry, know. I'm in the, I totally I'm in the didn't seat. see that because I was like, like, what the heck is... Oh, there it is. I'm so, in the Ford Taurus station wagon looking out the back window. <laughs> like, so there is this really interesting um, uh, wallpaper that uh, I've I've sent to K. Hodge about 11 times and it's it works. now. Uh, but if you see this picture, I mean, obviously, as the message says again... It's and too once again, late if you see it. Yeah, it's if you it's it's too late. This is now everyone's going to pass. Um, so this this whole thing, the real part of this picture is that, and and this is really why I highlighted this article because it actually will crash your phone because it has an improperly color coded color profile, oh, improperly coded color profile, and basically downloading this image, not looking at it, but downloading it, and says, ah, oh, here you go. This will crash it. Now I'm not going to go into all the horror, and you can kick me off of the uh, screen sharing thing or whatever when you want. Um, cool. And you probably killed the Samsung thing. Um, the uh, oh yes. that that picture one job. I mean, I've, for for one thing, I've always been <laughs> I've always been I, I, I don't thankfully I don't have any friends that are like, dude, you totally got to check out this wallpaper, man. Like, that's always <laughs> weird. It's like forwarding. Hey, when, you might win this. Contest. I would know right away. Together. Like if, what? if anybody was going to send me a wallpaper and said, Hey bro, yeah, I know right away. Yeah. It's going to be that Out. dude with the thing that's, they try to put, <laughs> and I'm not, I'm, I'm, it's not a family show, but I'm not going to go all out explicit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You all yeah. know what I'm talking about. The guy with the, yeah, that's what I get when I, people want to send me wallpapers. <laughs> And in various forms, you know what I'm talking about. We'll I, leave I, it at that. I, Pepper, pretend you don't know and, and make him draw it. Pepper doesn't know. He has no idea. <laughs> can you? You, uh, can you, you guys you, at home know what I'm talking about. I've got can it. You a draw wallpaper. a pictogram That's my on wallpaper. that for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's, can you that describe it and eight so. bit? <laughs> Just. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> In Minecraft, it looks like a sheet that's been turned upside down. <laughs> it's, it's in my, Can I get? I hope I don't get banned from my own channel, but that's about the most friendly. <laughs> Actually, in the chat, they're asking us to censor you. I'm not sure what that means. Um, Nothing new. Yeah, Nothing new. So, uh, <laughs> I think it's interesting that uh, I was looking. What I was really looking for on that article, though, about about crashing of phones, I was looking to see how this would impact iPhones, and I can't. I can't find out how it does. So um, I guess iPhones are just, you know, um, text us stupid Cyrillic characters and that'll blow up our phones. Uh, Android, you get to send people yeah. pictures. You Going know, back to know. last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, there's, there. Are, well, yeah, there's a whole other, you know, by the way, I, I just a little shout out uh, to Shannon Morse. If you like ever, she's been promoting a lot of interesting content during this time of, of protests and a lot love, of civil unrest. Love to have Shannon on. She, but she go back into, into this. This is going to sound weird. Go into her back catalog and look through some of the stuff like about mobile phones and, and sim jacking 
and some of the other stuff she's done with Hack Five. She's There's a like, gangster. She's she's yeah she's OG. So it, it's if if you're if you're like I want to learn something, but I don't quite want to like learn it, but I want to know about it and. Um, there's, I, I know a lot about that stuff and, and she, and she knows more. So the thing about Shannon is she has, she's good at art. By the way, we're talking about Shannon Morris. Go, go check out what is a hack five and, yeah. uh, link go check Shannon. out her, her on Twitter. Well, I guess Chris will link it super dope because they're legit hackers and they understand security really well. And they're able to articulate it in a way that like regular people without reading a hundred books and going into the dark web and all that, they can break down practical stuff you can do to like keep your life safe and locked down, which is probably the number one thing. And then also, if you look at the backside of what she's saying, how to really mess with people too. <laughs> so that's that's the cool part about that. Chris, I'm just really glad that you're looking at things appropriately because of how I can see your screen share in the backstage here. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> like, why oh, am yeah. I, I, gotta, I gotta stop sharing that thing now. Yeah, that's, um, oh, I, I figured like, you'd like that. Mm. Look, it's important. I mean, bacon comes from somewhere, right? It oh does. my gosh, this is just so bad. <sighs> is that a segue? I I don't know. It depends. I mean, there's no one cutting us off in the middle of it. Um, so I, I've I mean, I'm I don't even have a, a TCL television. I don't have a TCL smartphone. I don't um, I don't fit that criteria. I'm not from Canada or something. So <laughs> every every Canadian TCL went like <laughs> TCL went like Oprah. <laughs> All, every Canadian YouTuber, you get a TCL. You get a TCL. You get a TCL. I the think C that they stands must, for Canada. I'm going to put a Canadian flag in my, all of my talking Canadian life. I don't know what I'm going to say. But... I'm I'm Zach talks tech brother at TCL. It stands for tech <laughs> techs for Canadian lovers. Yes. For real. I, I think they must have gone to Canadians and they were like, hey, do you want to be a tech YouTuber? Because if you do, we're going to give you this phone and you're going to review it. It wasn't like you, you want... want a phone review. It was like, do you want to do this? Because are I mean, you interested in free health care? Would you like to start a YouTube tech channel? Are you and then in you're Canada? in. Where you they got everybody good. was they told them they were like, and you just said it and forget it. <laughs> what is TCL doing, Chris? Uh, well, TCL. So they make some pretty interesting TVs. I have not been able to find one because since those stimulus checks showed up, they've been gone in all the normal human size television sets but they are coming out with a new series of them so in the past they have had like series uh, i think like four five six whatever they have a different tiers of them but they're now going to instead of offering roku services with their tvs that was kind of what got tcl on the map back in 2014 they started launching them with the the roku built in and they were the roku tv and it was like roku with, with tcl now it's tcl with roku and now uh tcl is finally launching with android tv so I, I I saw this presser and then I went to read more about it and realized like you can buy them now at Best Buy. Like they literally dropped the press as they dropped them in Best Buy. So it's their Series 3 televisions. They're 129, 199. They're like 32 and 40 inch units. They're not, I mean, it's not the biggest, most amazing stuff, but reading about it, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by, I mean, it's Android TV, right? Which I'm just... Uh, well, I'm a fan jam. of it because you can manipulate it and sideload the hell out of it. That's why digitally. I like it. Yes. 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 That's the only reason I think it's great. I've been using it, the TCL 43 inch. Um, it's, I can't remember which series it is. I think it's the series five. Um, and it's got HDR and, um, it's 4k and all that. It's got, you know, it's got the Roku and it's okay. It's just a little weird because, I feel you constantly have to go back to that main display to get to anything that's not either Netflix, Hulu, or um, I think it's Spotify or whatever. The, the three shortcuts that's that are on the remote. The, yep. um, so it's just weird that you got to constantly go back to that. And then if you hit too far back, then you got to scroll down to find what you wanted. And it's it's just a little weird to use. It's not... It's not friendly like Android's interface or even like the Apple TV interface is more friendly as far as um, even like switching between apps and things like that is a little bit better. And but availability, I, mean, I will say on, on Apple TV, though, and this isn't real. I mean, this isn't really my 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 content purpose tonight was was really stay focused on this TCL thing. But I've got to say the thing that Apple TV is getting 
long in the tooth with their UI. Their remote is is demonic trash. I I swear that like they say Apple doesn't do a bunch of data mining for anything other than product improvement, unless you own an Apple TV remote, in which case the only thing they do is they watch when you think you figured out how to navigate exactly one icon over, they, they make it go two icons over. And we try to go back. It's like, you know, the slippery hockey puck hill. You can't get the stupid icon you want to select selected. So (laughs) while I love the UI and I, and I do appreciate the simplicity of it, the stupid app management on the, on the Apple TV, the best thing they ever did was give it, like the ability to sync and the ability to unify applications across Apple TVs. But I still wish that that remote would burn in hell. And only- I'm hoping, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I'm hoping that, yeah, I, what I'm interested to see is with Android TV, I've, I've never owned one. And thankfully I don't want to buy a TV that small. Um, but I would like to see if, you know, what the features are that come with it. And is there anything that's, you know, like lets you sort of like sync apps across TVs if you bought like a T I mean, say you've got kids or something like that. 32 TV, 32 inch TV in a kid's room is, is great. I mean, if you're trying to keep them in their room all the time or something, but um, I think the ability I've to tried, like sync- it doesn't work. <laughs> well, you just, you keep leaving the other side of the oh, doorknob attached though. And all those pictures, I see both sides of the doorknob and you've got to take one out. That's the trick. Well, uh, Gary's been using TCL for his monitor, the 43 inch. It's got 120 hertz, which is the same one that we have. It has, if you switch it over to like the gaming profile, it goes to 120 hertz. Um, and yes, I've tested it and checked it, and it is like actually 120 hertz. It's not like a simulated where they, where they, uh, like uh, do integral frames or whatever, like some of these do, and you get the weird blur effect because even the 60 hertz isn't really 60 hertz. Um, yeah, there's something to do when the, especially if there's upscaling between the native, what's coming in, being piped into the system, and then you put it on a computer and it's totally different. That's why I was asking Gary about the speed. And as, as far as like, uh, if you have one in one room and another in another room, um, the only thing I know is you can sign into your Roku account and then whatever uh, whatever services you have linked with that, then when you sign in on a new device, those sign-ins should already be okayed and established so you don't have to go in and sign into Netflix and YouTube and stuff all over again on every device you sign into your Roku. Oh, that ac- that's actually pretty good. Um, that's good. what I've understood because I could link it and now it says, hey, next time you, you know, use a Roku TV or whatever, supported TV, it will be there. So I don't really have a way of testing it unless I were to just for testing purpose, go out and buy another TV, which I could do. If you were dedicated to good content, that's what you do. I mean, the thing I like is <laughs> if you cared it, about your audience. It's an HDR TV, 4K, 43 inch, and was 299 new. Like that's pretty good. And the 4K quality is is really nice. Um, and when you're viewing like uh, YouTube 4K HDR content, you can go into the. It will pop up the menu, so it only pops it up when you're in watching 4K content. So if you're watching 1080p, it's not there unnecessarily. And there are like a there's like a normal a bright, a dark, and brighter mode for that HDR. So if you're in a bright room, you turn it up. But if you're in a normal lighting room, you'd have it at normal. And then if you're in a dark room, you know, that... Oh, the deep, um, deep, the levels of contrast between the The levels of... But then there's contrast change stuff, too. So it gets even more fine-tuned than that. Um, Now, obviously, if you bought some Samsung, like $1,500 Samsung TV, a lot of those have... um, where it senses the ambient light in the room and will adjust for you and things like that. So you don't have to auto adjust the brightness and all that. And, but to be able to go in and do that isn't difficult. And it's nice that you don't have to go into some other, it's right on the remote. You hit a star icon, it pops up a menu, you go change whatever you want. They're simulated surround sound. I can tell you, I did a, I went and searched YouTube for, it was like HDR Dolby Atmos simu- uh, test and played it. And their surround sound is actually pretty good. Like the differentiation from moving from left to right 
was actually pretty good for not having like a sound bar or something mounted in there and it's not like they're ridiculously high i think it's like 2.5 watts a channel or something but i'd imagine it's kind of hard to hold a sound bar and a tv though too i was impressed like yeah the only caveat i have to say is two things i got two things for you one apple tv sucks um because and here's why because i can't use it without signing into it and then the second part it sucks is i can't sideload what i actually use to stream stuff without paying money so it has no purpose for me in my life I, I, because, I because, those, of those, because of those two things. I now, you're, you're making content though. So, you know, you're, you're now, you're making content here. You're I, making content. I, maybe you're unaware, but I actually spend hundreds of dollars per month to make my crappy content. I'm, I spend money to, to force myself upon the world. That's, that's my plan here. And then the second thing I have to say is, I think Google is reaching out to TCL and others because you're going to start seeing Apple realizing that we're at a, a hardware stalemate. Apple's going to start expanding into other manufacturers. Also, I would not be surprised. They already to see are. Part, I would not be surprised to see them starting to go all high end with you buy the highest end Sony XB. I don't even know because I didn't research it, but whatever the high end stuff is, you're going to start seeing Apple TV will be integrated because yeah. that's where the, they want to get those services. I have Apple TV Plus on my TCL TV. Um, well, Sam, na- Samsung natively, is doing natively, or you you put yes, it in there? like it let me. Yeah, it M- was one my- of the things they asked me was like, "Hey, you're using an iPhone to set this up. Do you wanna <laughs> like? Do you want to?" So buying an Apple TV is kind of pointless then, because well, it depends. every new TV is a smart TV. Unless you're just buying a throwaway. It depends, though, because you don't get... Not all of them have the AirPlay support just because it has the Apple TV Plus right. stuff. They don't right. all use that protocol. And here's where Apple TV beats like Chromecast and some of that. You can use Apple TV to watch stuff on like streaming from your iPhone or your iPad or your laptop or whatever without internet connection. Because it's not loading up like a, like an app in a browser, you can stream from your phone to your Apple TV with no Wi-Fi network. So, like, you could be up in the middle of Canada, you could be in Toronto at your cabin or whatever, your TCL, and you could <laughs> plug in your Apple TV and cast from your iPhone. Um, there's an app called Air Parrot for Windows computers where you can cast. Without having to have a Wi-Fi network or why another can't, connection, you can cast from your phone. You could why play. Can, why can't know. we consolidate? Why can't we consolidate that standard? I know Apple likes to have Lightning and not USB C, but why is? I mean, come on, screen sharing should be universal, also, right? So you can. I told you guys about when I was in Israel. Wife's iPhone dead in the water. Google Pixel. I'm in another country. There's different power coming from the walls. Different languages everywhere. <laughs> my pixel play my pixel played nice with the entire country of Israel. Yeah. The iPhone couldn't do a damn thing. Nothing could do zero unless that somebody happened to have another Apple device to plug it into. It was completely worthless. I do wish that that Don't. would be a unified um and I wish that it would function like the Apple TV does and the Chromecast. So the Apple TV functionality that you can use it basically you can just have your phone stream to it and essentially it's using your phone's data connection without a hotspot because if you do hotspot to it you could do that but then you're limited by how much data your hotspot allows and if you have a hotspot this you can stream that you can stream stuff that's stored locally you could have downloaded a bunch of netflix before you left and stream that way but then on the other hand chromecast is nice because you can cast something and then you can leave the room and your wife or kid or whatever can pick up their phone and it will say, oh, you know, um, so Netflix is playing on the living room TV. So you just tap the thing and you take over and play pause, control volume, whatever. Um, See, I don't that's trust nice. that. So a blended between the two would be nice because sometimes it's nice to be able to you can just leave and the connections maintained other times. Um, I don't. It's I don't, not. I don't trust that stuff. I don't like I don't like picking off from a signal because sometimes I'm in the bathroom 
and I'm watching something on my phone and I don't want anybody else to know I'm watching it. So I don't know if you guys do that, but just like, you know, sometimes I don't want it shared. That's just... Well, that's not going to show up. I'm just talking about what's on the TV. Well, I guess <laughs> it only... could if you no, watch actually, it in the you've, bedroom. You've only, you've only really got to be concerned if you have like HomePods uh, and you're doing that because I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've been in a different area of the house. And yes, I am the guy. I am the guy. Everyone has, has long for a long time wanted to know who is that person? that bought the home pod i did i never at full retail i would never do single that kind of sale thing. but i i bought now i have <laughs> i have a i have i have more than a few of them even but uh and i i enjoy them i was formerly a sonos guy whatever and blah 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 but uh anyways the, the thing that's funny with the home pod is now you know you get the i the iphone near it and the i and the home pod will like steal the sound i'm sorry uh feature some neat thing whatever and uh, their apple markets it but real <laughs> realistically when i go to the counter in the kitchen and I put my phone down. If I'm listening to a channel, it will just move over to the HomePod automatic, which is great. And then you go, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm taking a phone call on my other phone or whatever. I want to stop this thing. And then you go to the other end of your house and then you're like, oh, I think I'm going to listen to some Bon Jovi, you know, the acoustic stuff, whatever really gets me in the mood to have a productive work day. And then I turn the volume up because I can't hear it. I'm like, what the hell? Meanwhile, um, I'm really upsetting somebody else at the other end of the house because the HomePod is sticky and has kept the audio back at it. Uh, so that's the only problem you have. I, I've never had that same situation where you're talking about where you're, I know that you look up, uh, strange, uh, mechanic videos, uh, people working on cars and, uh, sweating oh, yeah. and all that stuff. That's the yes. primary thing you're looking up. Yes. It's I more about that. the, more about the consumer that they can't afford to pay to have their car <laughs> fixed. And, oh, you've seen that one. No. Um, <laughs> anyways, K Hodge, uh, tile. I'm actually going to be doing a video on this soon. Skull candy has a pair of, earphones now with tile built into it so you can and for anybody that doesn't know tile is so you can geolocate it's something that apple will innovate and come out mm -hmm. with shortly but uh where can you find those mike uh i believe they're only pre-order at the moment because when i read the article on them i couldn't buy them so i haven't seen if they're available yet but you'd think they'd be I easier to find i would definitely be buying a pair i would think so you think so <laughs> i got what chris meant no, I did too. <laughs> he just wasn't, he was like, I'm not giving this thing gas. It's so you guys, so when you're in the world of live streaming with a bunch of characters, you have to do something called avoidance. Yes. That's where you purposely and willfully avoid what they're trying to infer. That's why I took the pad off my seat. <laughs> I ride bikes with no seats. It's more fun that way. Anyways, Same. we digress. I think that about wraps us up for today. Yeah, I think it does. First episode of Tech Circus on our own channel. Make sure you guys like the stream for us, even if you hated it. Down, give a thumbs yeah. down. Activity is good. And if people it's wonder, good, it's bad. It, it does say Tech Circus behind Interaction. us. It doesn't say Tech Chris. Chris. I just love when it says Tech Chris. It or, might as well. If you hated it, it says Tech Chris. If you liked it, it says Tech Circus. <laughs> We're so going to rotate remember. the name. Exactly. But we appreciate you guys all for coming out. Uh, what do we got Certainly. here? What, two more content creator using the home pods. Uh, tech for your needs is doing smart. Save that thought. We'll get to you next week. Um, every Monday, <laughs> 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, sometime central that nobody really knows because I think only one person here lives there. Greenland. <laughs> Greenland. Don't forget Green Greenland. And 11 p.m. Greenland. <laughs> We're going to start announcing our shows with Zulu time. That's. <laughs> Uh, and if it's this time of the year and you happen to live in Tanzania, it is 5 a.m. <laughs> Don't forget Atlantic time, 30 minutes. No, not I only hour. know that because of randomness. But anyways, is um, there anything that's not random with you? Hey, I like tech. I like uh, tech love mama suggestion. Put circus tents on all corners, which is good because I mean, I could see that in the design. That would certainly that would that's be better that would than be the suggestion design. that my wife just texted me and said, you suck and stop. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be something about pitching tents. She just said, <laughs> shut up and let the other guys talk. <laughs> Take us on. Well, we always know that it being a tech circus it, and with Mike in charge, it will definitely be intense. <laughs> I'm like, I, I am the definite clown. Oh, I have God. red hair with a size 16 shoe. <laughs> so, and that's like an actual thing. I just need the red nose and we're good to go. Chris, tell everybody goodbye for me. I'm done everyone. Talking. Thank you to everybody in the chat. Thank you to everybody in the replay crew. Thank you to my man, sort of lovely uh, co-hosts, uh, hosts, whatever we're all, the whole pure thing here. Mike, Michael, it's been real. 
fam, it's been real. We will see you guys and gals and everyone in between, all of you next week, same time, same channel here on Tech Circus, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, and, you know, do the math for the in-between. Till then, bye. Bye, guys. Stay safe. Appreciate you all. Good night, everybody.